Hey, what's going on? And welcome to video six in our Flutter tutorial series where we're building this to-do list application uh, using the MVVM design pattern. Uh, so in this video, we're going to be going over the creation of this uh, task info view section that shows the total amount of tasks that we have remaining as well uh, as the total amount of tasks that we have just in total. Uh, and we're gonna be putting this into this, what is currently green section on my end. And uh, yeah, let's just get right into this. So the very first thing we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna want to go into our views folder and create a new file that is called, we wanna create a new file called task info view dot dart. And within there, let's go ahead and create um, a new stateless widget called task info view. Now, again, because we are going to be retrieving data inside of this view and updating data inside of this view uh, from, the, um, from the view model, we're going to be wanting to use the consumer. So we're going to create a consumer and we're going to make sure that we're being explicit about the type on that change notifier. And then we're gonna set up the builder as we have previously. And within it, we're going to just start by returning an empty container. So perfect, uh, pretty run of the mill for what we've, what we've been doing up to this point so far. Uh, all we're gonna do now is go back into our task page and we're gonna replace that placeholder that we had beforehand with that new task that we had just, or with that new widget that we just created. So let's just go ahead and put in that task info view uh, widget into there. And then if we hit save and reload, we'll notice that you know it'll just be empty for now because we haven't really gone in and uh, you know built that out just yet. So uh, let's go ahead and do that now. Um, if we open that task info view back up, uh, what we're going to notice about that task info view is that we have uh, kind of a bunch of uh, widgets kind of stacked up on top of each other. We have a bunch of text views uh, and we're going to be using a lot of columns and rows to basically get this into here um, the way that we expect. So the very first thing we're gonna wanna do is just we'll just build out one of those indicator views and then we'll just copy it over and then retrieve the view data as needed. So the first thing we're gonna do inside of this consumer is inside of this container, uh, let's start by just providing a decoration that will change the background color and provide a bit of a um, border radius. So let's set the decoration to be a, um, a box decoration. And inside that box decoration, let's provide a color from the view model Again, we have to go back in here and change value to view model and then go view model dot color level two. And what we're going to do from this point is also set uh, the border radius to uh, circular border radius. So border radius, border radius dot circular and give it a value of 10. Now, if we save that and I reload the app, we'll see that the background matches the rest of the application. But we'll also notice that there is a slight border radius. We can't really see it just yet. Maybe it's a little bit too small, uh, but it's there. It'll make it'll be a little bit more visible um, once we build out the rest of uh, this widget. So uh, the next thing we we'll want to do is underneath our decoration, we're going to want to provide a child, and the child that we're going to be using is a column. And the reason why we're using a column is so that way we can get those two text views stacked on top of one another. So before we style those text views, let's just get started by creating those two text views uh, and retrieving the data that we want to retrieve. So within our first text view, we're going to show the total amount of tasks that we have in our application. So within a string, let's just go ahead and interpolate the data from our view model. So we can just use a couple of parentheses or uh, quotation, uh, quotes here to create a string and then we can interpolate in uh, some information from our view model. So if we just go view model and then get the number of tasks, if we save that and reload it, you'll see that we now have um, the total number of tasks that we have in our application. And if we go ahead and delete one, that will decrement. If we add one, that will also increment back to seven. So what we're gonna wanna do from here is we're going to want to add our next text uh, widget and that's just going to say total tasks and if we save that now we'll see that those go on top of one another perfect so now that we have that done we can get started on uh, providing the styles for both of these text 
widgets. Um, and for the one that actually has the number of tasks in it, let's create a, a new style that is a text style. And this text style is going to have a font size of 28. And it's also going to have a color. And we're going to retrieve a color from the view model. And we'll use color level three for this one. And what we'll also do is provide a font weight and we'll go font weight dot bold. If we save that, should get our code uh, organized nice and neatly here. And uh, there we go. So if I reload it now, we can see that the, it's starting to look a little bit better. Uh, the next thing we're gonna wanna do uh, is hop on over to this next text view and then let's create a style for this one as well. Uh, this style, we're going to want to uh, create the color and the font weight. So the font weight for this one is going to be, well, let's start with the color. Uh, let's create a new text style. And the color is going to be uh, view model. And we'll get color level four. This one will just be slightly darker. And then we will also uh, go ahead and say font weight is equal to font weight dot w600 we save that and reload it again it's starting to look a little bit better and it's starting to resemble a little bit more of what we have in our application so if we look at what the final product looks like we can see that it has a little bit more of a like an alignment layout set up to kind of provide some uh, visually appealing spacing so let's go ahead and recreate that now that we have um, the data created and import or you know being represented inside of those text view widgets and let's do that by wrapping our text field in a fitted box. Uh, so we're gonna wrap our text field in a fitted box. And that fitted box, we're going to wrap in an align widget. So we're gonna also wrap that one in an align widget and we're going to set the alignment to um, alignment.center. And then if we save that and reload it, Again, it's not really going to change much just yet because we haven't actually given or we haven't really told uh, the alignment widget how much space it has to work with. Uh, so before it can align itself within the widget, we're going to want to wrap it inside of an expanded widget. So we're going to wrap it inside of an expanded widget and give it a flex value of one. Uh, but this flex value, or two rather, uh, but this flex value doesn't really mean all too much unless we also uh, do the same thing to this secondary text value. So let's kind of follow the same pattern here. We're going to wrap the text into a fitted box. And then that fitted box, we are going to wrap in an align widget. So let's wrap that in the align widget. And then uh, that, that align widget, let's provide an alignment. And for that alignment, let's just say that this one is gonna be top center. So it's gonna be at the very top of the amount of space available uh, within the uh, parent widget. So we'll say top center. And if we save that and reload it, still doesn't really know what to do until we wrap it inside of an expanded widget. So if we wrap this one into an expanded widget and provide a flex value of one, it now has a little bit more of an idea of how much space it has available to work with. So if we reload this, it will start to actually uh, represent some of those alignment constraints that we had provided. All right, so um, the last thing we're gonna wanna do is uh, we have our column wrapped in a container. Uh, we're going to want to take this container and now we're going to want, uh, wrap this into an expanded widget of its own because we have two containers that consist of columns and those two columns uh, have our number and our title. So we're gonna wanna basically put this into a row so they can exist side by side. Uh, similar to how uh, this has it right here. So we want them to both be right next to each other and we want them to share equal amount of space. So uh, the best way to do that is to put them into a row with the same amount of a flex value. So let's wrap this container inside of an expanded widget and provide it with a flex value of one. And then again, one more time, let's uh, wrap this expanded widget inside of a, uh, of a row of its own. And let's just go ahead and hit save, reload. It's not gonna change much because we still only have the one widget inside of the row. So let's take, let's start by commenting this out a little bit. Let's say this is going to be the, uh, this is the total tasks. 
And then now let's just copy this entire expanded widget. Now, if we copy that and paste it in between the two, let's just provide a little bit of space, space, excuse me. So let's uh, provide a sized box with a width of uh, say 20 and let's save. And then also above the second expanded widget, let's just give a little bit of a comment uh, saying that this is the amount of remaining tasks that we have. So now if we save this and reload it, we're going to see that we have our two widgets side by side, uh, but it's taking up too much space and we've already uh, kind of gone over how we want the edge inset uh, for the entire application uh, to kind of provide a margin for all of our views that kind of line up to about 15 pixels in uh, from the sides. So let's go in one more time and wrap our row inside of a container. And inside of that container, let's just go ahead and provide a margin. And this margin, we will just say margin, or we'll say edge insets uh, dot all. And let's just provide that with the value of 15. If we save that and reload it, looks like we're taking a little bit too much off the top. So let's say uh, our edge insets on the margin will uh, be from uh, left, top, right, and bottom. So from LRT, LTRB uh, on the sides. So on the left and right, we'll provide 15. On the top and bottom, we'll go ahead and provide uh, 10, just so it's not cutting too much off the top and off the bottom. So the left will consist of uh, 15. Top is going to be 10 right is also going to be 15 and bottom is going to be 10 as well and if we reload that that's looking a little bit better and now all that's really left to do uh, for this one is to hop into our uh, second uh, set of uh, expanded widgets and into the second column and update the total tasks to just say remaining and then if we refresh that it's looking a little bit better. And now we need to go into our view model and then provide a helper function to basically filter through all of our tasks and then return the number of tasks that we have completed um, or that we have remaining. So currently you can see that we have access to the number of tasks, but we don't have a clear access to a variable that will tell us how many tasks that we have uh, remaining um, within our uh, view model. So let's go into our applications view model and underneath uh, num tasks, let's just uh, provide an integer and set that to be get, and we'll say int get num tasks remaining. And we'll just go ahead and set that equal to tasks. And we're gonna perform like a filter operation on this. So um, we're gonna be referencing our list of tasks and we're just gonna say where, um, tasks dot where, and element matches a certain kind of predicate. So what this is going to do is basically kind of like iterate over all of the tasks in our uh, tasks list. And if let's just say element is equal to task. So each one is actually going to be referencing a specific task in that list. And if the task is marked as complete, it's going to basically from this point, create a um, like a filtered list of all the tasks that are complete. So we're gonna to wanna to get the ones that are not complete. So we'll just negate it with this exclamation point at the beginning. And it's going to still complain at us because we basically here have a list of uh, tasks, but what we really need is the length. So if we just do dot length, we will uh, basically just return uh, a number um, on a filtered list of tasks where we're only just basically getting the number of tasks that we have remaining. So let's go ahead and save that and if we go back into our task info view and then go back to our second column that has the amount remaining and then go to our view model here, let's go view model dot num tasks remaining. And if we save that and reload our app, we'll see that it is working. So it's going to show the total number of tasks we have remaining. So if we check all of these, it should show zero. And if we create a new task, um, cool, that should, work as expected. Uh, so that's it for video number uh, for video number six in the series. Uh, the last thing that we need to do is uh, it looks like implement this header view and this header view will uh, 
go into this red section over here and we'll do that in the next video. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you later. Peace.